Hey everyone, Sean Frangelli here with a new Cinema 4D video about the R17 updates to the Variation Shader. So the Variation Shader is a really cool new addition to materials. You can randomize colors and do a lots of cool stuff with it. And let's dive into Cinema 4D and we'll get right into what you can do with this new feature. So here we are in R17 with this quick render of this variation effect on our material working in full effect and we're already making bad jokes. So let's get into our project. And if we take a look at our material on our color channel, we have this variation effect set up to really drive what we can do with this. So let's dive into how to do this from scratch. I'll just delete my material. And all we got going on here is a cloner with a cube in it. And I got a sphere in it too, just so we can take a look at some options. And I'll just double click to make a new material. I'll double click here. On the materials now on R17, you can see we got this new color picker. And if you want to learn more about that, you can check out my video on the color picker, as well as any of my other top features in my top five video. And since we're going to override this with our variation texture, this doesn't really matter right now. So what I'm going to do to get my variation effect set up in my is go to this texture drop down and go to effect variation. And then I can click on that and that's going to let me fully drive setting up this variation material. So I'll call this new material and let's just drop this onto this whole cloner system and I'll do a quick area render so we can see what's going on. So right away by default, it's going to randomly texture our objects. Now, if we wanted to control this, like we saw in our last one, how we can get started with this is create a base texture and then we get our drop down again. So we could load different materials or create a color. So I'll just start with the color. So let's go into this color and we'll just create like a kind of mid-tone green and that'll be our base color. Now I can click back to get back to here and it's by default taking that and adding a random color. So if I turn off this random color, we're basically at nothing. So if we just wanted slight tweaks on this, we could change our grading variation. If we just adjust our saturation up a bit, maybe our lightness, you can see in our preview what's happening. If we wanted to shift this just a little bit of colors, we could drag our hue. And since we're on green, it'll start to shift to lighter and darker greens and browns. And we can even change our contrast. So if we were doing this in a system of cubes or spheres like this, this is a good way to get a little bit of slight variation. Now, if we wanted to really push this, if I undo that, we can go even further. We could turn up our random color and that's going to really push this. Once we're on our random color, we can further refine that even more by turning up the contrast, our hue and saturation, and then we're going to get really bright colors. Now we also could add a secondary texture here on top of this and blend them together. So let's go to secondary texture and let's do a noise. And then you can see we're starting to get a little bit of a noise channel and we can click into there. And just like if we were doing a bump texture, grab something, and then we can blend that together on top of that with the secondary texture blend. So a little similar to the new reflectance tab in R17, we can start to stack up and blend different textures together. We also could blend a gradient on here and we could even adjust our gradient a bit. And that's going to change how that's falling onto there. And another thing we could do is add our variation in our noise. So let's first tone this down a little. Let's go to like a blue and we'll go back and let's turn down this random color. I'll delete this secondary texture because I don't need that. And just turn that off and turn the gradient blend off as well. I just want a little bit of randomness. So I'm going to take down our contrast, take a lot of these down. So we just get a blue color with a little bit of variation and let's pop off my cube and turn on my sphere. So now we got these little blue bubbles with a little bit of difference. Now let's turn on a bump and instead of just going noise, I'm going to go to effect variation, click into variation. And now for my base texture, I can create a new noise and that's going to be my bump. And then I can click into noise, change the type of bump to something else. So we notice it a bit more. And then I'm going to go back and go to my bump and just turn that up quite a bit just for the sake of discussion so we can see what's going on here. And then I'll go back in my variation. And then I'm going to add a secondary texture noise again, click into noise and I'll grab a different one. So let's grab this one because we can really see what's going on. 
back up. And now we can really start to see how these are blending together. And if we zoom in to a couple of these pretty close, you can see because we have some variation added to this, we're getting different types of bump projections on different instances of this. So you can do a lot with this, it's pretty cool. One last little tip you can do is by default, it's going to project these onto the whole object. So if I go back to my color tab where I already have this variation loaded, I can change this polygon variation to polygons, selection tags, or UVs. So you could specifically pick tags or change this to polygons. And now we're gonna get different variation added to each polygon on these cubes. So it's a really powerful new effect. You can do a lot with it. It's one new feature I'm really excited about. And if you wanna learn more about new features of R17, you can check out my other videos on new features like the new pen tool, the new take system, the Metaball updates, and lots of new stuff. By clicking those thumbnails on the video, there's lots of new features in R17 and there's a lot to learn and we'll keep going over new features and if there's any new features you want to learn more about, you can let me know on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella, and you can hashtag those R17. And let me know what features you're excited about or what you want to know more about. And be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get new videos all the time on Cinema 4D, After Effects, Motion Graphics, and whatever's going on in the 3D and VFX industry. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.